OK, I can confirm that you are now live, Chair. Thank you. Uh, so good, good morning, everybody. I'm sorry we're a couple of minutes late. Um, you think you've just cracked the technology and then it uh, then it plays you up at the last minute, but uh, we're, we're definitely getting better at it. Um, so good morning to uh, members and to officers and to the members of the public who've uh, given up their morning to watch the live stream of this meeting of South Cambridgeshire District Council's Cabinet. Uh, my name is Bridget Smith and I'm the leader of the District Council and I'm the chair of the Cabinet. And for information of uh, members of the public, the Cabinet's made up of myself and eight lead Cabinet members and we're responsible for most of the Council services, for preparing the budget and for the Council's major policies and strategies for consideration by full Council, which consists of all members. So the normal procedure at cabinet meetings is to take votes by affirmation, and that's what we intend to do. Uh, but when we move to a vote on an item, I will ask members if they agree with the proposal. And if anyone wants to vote against or abstain, then we'll take it. We'll take a roll call. Uh, so um, at that point, we'll ask members to uh, speak individually into the microphone. So just to uh, introduce, uh, I'll just run through who the cabinet members are. Uh, we've got Councillor um, Aidan van der Weyer. Actually, if, I think if cabinet members would like to introduce themselves, that's probably best. So if we start off with Councillor van der Weyer, if you'd like to introduce yourself. I'm uh, Aidan van der Weyer, I'm a member for Barrington and I'm also one of the deputy leaders. Thank you. Councillor Bill Handley. Hello, uh, Councillor Bill Handley, uh, member for Over and Willingham. Councillor Toomey Hawkins. Good morning, um, Councillor Toomey Hawkins. I'm the District Councillor for Caldicott Ward and the member for planning. Thank you, Councillor Peter MacDonald. Good morning, um, I'm Councillor MacDonald. I'm the lead cabinet member for business recovery and skills. Councillor Brian Mills. Good morning, uh, Brian Mills, member for Sawston and lead for environmental waste and uh, licensing. And Councillor Hazel Smith. Hello, I'm Hazel Smith. I'm the lead member for housing and member for Milton and Water Beach Ward. Thank you. And last but not least, Councillor John Williams. Good morning, I'm Councillor John Williams. I'm uh, the member for Fendin and Fullball, and I'm also lead member for finance. Thank you. So I can confirm that the meeting is quorum. Um, and can I just check that we've got Councillor Gre um, Grenville Chamberlain, who's the chair of Scrutiny and Overview Committee present? No, have we got the vice chair of Scrutiny and Overview present, please? Yes, good morning. It's Judith here. Um, Judith Griffith, Milton and Water Beach Ward and vice chair. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Um, so uh, are there any non-cabinet members present in this meeting, please? Um, yes, yes. Councillor Lacey, uh, member for Girton. Good morning. Um, Councillor Daunton, uh, member for Fenditton and Fullbourne Ward. Councillor Sue Ellington, uh, Councillor for Swavesea Ward. Councillor Heather Williams. Oh. After you, Heather. Councillor Heather Williams, the Mordens Ward. Uh, uh, Councillor Anna Bradnam, Milton and Water Beach Ward. Councillor Richard Williams for the Whittlesford Ward. And anyone else? Uh, Councillor Jeff Harvey for Borsham Ward. Good morning. Is that, it? Is that everyone? Jolly good. Well, thank you. Thank you very much uh, to those non-cabinet members for attending. Uh, and just to confirm, we've got various um, officers from our senior leadership team. Liz Watts, our chief executive, Peter Maddox, head of finance, uh, Stephen Kelly, director of shared planning, Rory McKenna, our monitoring officer, uh, Jeff Membry, who's head of transformation. I can see Phil Bird there and various various other people who we might well be calling upon um, at, during the meeting. Uh, and Susan Gardner-Craig, who's head of H HR. So uh, apologies for absence. So if I could just go to Jonathan, please, for apologies for absence. Good morning. Thank you, Leader. Uh, we have received apologies from Councillor Neil Gold. 
Thank you very much. And there's no further apologies that I'm aware of. Uh, so moving on to item three, which is declarations of interest. Uh, has anybody got, a, got an interest to declare in relation to today's agenda? Um, yes, um, it's Councillor MacDonald. Uh, I'd like to declare non-pecuniary interest as membership of the Investment Partnerships Board. Thank you very much. And that is noted. Any other declarations of interest? No, nope. so we move on to the minutes of the previous meeting, which I will propose, and I believe Councillor van der Weyer is going to second. Is that correct? Yes, I'm very happy to second the minutes. Thank you very much indeed. So I'll just move uh, through the minutes. Uh, so starting at um, page one, page two, page three, page four, page five, page six, and page seven. Uh, so if every... Councillor Williams would like to speak, but she didn't specify what to so, um... uh, Hello, Councillor Williams, what would you like to uh, point out? Uh, just because there's three of them, I take it that's me. Councillor Heather Williams. <laughs> yes, I know. We've, got all, we've got a full hat trick today. Oh, have you? How, how confusing. <laughs> It was just that I'm missing a, um, on the list of attendees, but I did I did attend. I was five minutes late, but I was attend. You were indeed. So if we could correct that, please. Thank you very much for pointing that out. OK, so members, uh, you're asked to approve. Do our members agree to approve the minutes? Agree. 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 Uh, does anyone wish to agree. vote against? And does anyone wish to abstain? So thank you. So the cabinet therefore agrees the approval of the minutes as a correct record by affirmation. Uh, and then at 4B, we have a, writ uh, a written uh, answer relating to minute five of the previous meeting. And so I'm just asking you to note the response that is printed in the agenda. OK. Uh, and moving on to public questions now, uh, we have had a question submitted by uh, Mr. Richard Williams, and um, unfortunately he's not able to attend. I, I trust that he's not un, not unwell, um, but we will we will take the question and I will uh, I will answer it. So I shall just uh, in Mr. Williams's absence, I will read his question which said the internal audit report on the decision at Craftway Steeple Morden is a step in the right direction, but the report fails to address why the planning permission was deleted from the public planning register after it was issued and fails to investigate at what level the decision to delete the permission was taken. Deleting planning permissions from the public planning register undermines the public's confidence in the integrity of this council and calls into question whether the public planning register can in fact be relied upon as the definitive record of planning permission in this district. Will the cabinet commit to also ask the internal audit team to investigate the circumstances regarding the, the deletion of the permission from the public planning register? Uh, so I have a... Um, an answer to that. Um, so I thank Mr Williams for taking the trouble to submit a question to Cabinet um, and the answer is as follows. Following a further discussion with the head of internal audit, my understanding of the situation is that an officer noticed that the planning permission had been issued on Friday the 13th and knew that to be a mistake. Therefore, it was agreed to take the document down until the system could be interrogated. Now, that happened on Monday the 16th, and as is set out in the detailed internal audit report, it was realised that this mistake was a combination of human error and the system not being set up to proactively identify this risk. And at this stage, the decision was republished. So I've asked the head of internal audit to continue to investigate that whether there are any further improvements that the council can make to the system regarding this matter. So thank you very much. And that response will be published in the minutes. So moving on to item six, which is actions taken under chief executives delegated powers. And um, we, members, you're asked to note the report. 
So moving on from that to item number seven, which is the quarter two performance report uh, starting at page 13 and going on to page 36. Now it would normally be Councillor Neil Goff who presented this, but since he's not here, it's going to be me. Uh, so I would like to start by thanking uh, um, Jeff Membry and his team for a very good piece of work here. And I'm particularly impressed by the quality of the uh, narrative that now accompanies uh, all the all the um, rag ratings that we get for our KPIs. Uh, it's quite obvious to anybody who reads this, even in uh, fairly cursory detail, that COVID's had a significant impact on just about every area of our of our services. And actually, I'm impressed by how well we things have actually held up. I think it um, they could easily have been much much worse. Uh, so I just want to sort of go through some. Uh, particular bits. Um, so it starts off looking at benefits. Now our benefits team has been under enormous pressure. They've had to uh, they've had to help us get all these these government grants out uh, and keep business as usual going. So I think the fact that uh, performance has been maintained um, you know by by them is to absolutely to to their credit because I think they must have been working night and day. We've just seen a slight dip in the number of days to process HB and CTS um, change of events in September into the amber but it's very is very marginal. Um, finance has held up really well and on revenues Again, um, the the reds that we're seeing on the collection of uh, non domestic rates are completely and utterly um, attributable by to COVID. But interestingly, you'll see there's been quite a significant turnaround uh, from between July and September, and I, I'm expecting that to improve still further as we've started to um, issue statutory rem statutory reminders. So that's that is completely down down to COVID, but I'm glad to see some uh, some recovery there. Um, one of the biggest sort of financial impacts from COVID on us and every other uh, local authority with housing responsibility has been on bed and breakfast accommodation, and so you know we've seen um, we've seen a doubling of uh, of expenditure here. Uh, but again, I think you know we've been very successful in getting people into accommodation. Part of the problem is, and you'll if you read the narrative, you'll appreciate that people go into temporary accommodation, and it's very difficult with the current situation to get them out of temporary into permanent accommodation. And I was talking to um, some of our housing team the other day, and we're just not seeing as many voided properties as we were as we were in the past. I presume because people aren't changing their jobs and, and so on, and uh, life is feeling very uncertain for, for lots of people. So that was that's to be expected, and uh, I commend our housing team for uh, for all the work that they've done. Um, on the housing and property services, um, again, COVID uh, is the reason for the average days to relet stock uh, going uh, becoming so long. There's been nothing we've been allowed we've been able to do about that because people weren't allowed to move house during the last lockdown. Um, and on emergency repairs, there's some concern there about the time that they are, they have taken very recently, but I gather that that is, that is being fully, fully investigated. Um, so I think everything else, yeah, there's a bit on complaints. I've, I've had talks to uh, Jeff Membry about uh, the, the time taken taken to respond to complaints and I know Jeff is uh, focusing on this um, it's a real priority for him so I'm expecting to see improvements there but we have to bear in mind that our, our workforce have been hugely um, committed to dealing with the Covid pandemic and I think we've achieved a lot to keep business going as usual to the degree that we have so I think um, Councillor van der Weyer is going to second this. Uh, Councillor van der Weyer, do you want to say anything at this point? Uh, no, that's fine. I, I do want to second this. I'll, 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 Thank you very much. Um, are there any questions from any other members of Cabinet? No. Uh, Ms, uh, Jeff Membry, do, would you like, is there anything you want to add to what I've said? Um, 
Thank you, Leader. Just just to say that this continues to be a work in progress. We're looking to strengthen the performance monitoring information to make it more up to date for members and to continue to uh, give the the, uh, the the contextual information, which which, as you say, is, is significantly better than it it was. Uh, and we're, uh, but we're looking to continue to strengthen that as we move forward. Um, I, I, I agree with you. it tends to reflect good performance given the impact of COVID on all of the council services. Yeah, thank, thank you very much, and thank you, thank you again to your, to you and to your team for putting together um, a report that's very easily easy to understand. Um, okay, so I've got two speakers so far. Uh, Councillor Heather Williams to start with. Thank you. Um, my, it's a suggestion really for cabinet's consideration is under the finance um, section. So on page 17, we can see the undisputed invoices paid within 30 days and, and those figures are you know, very good. But given, given the situation and what we'll see later on in the meeting about delayed invoicing, etc., whether it would be appropriate to include another KPI in there in relation to acid tests, acid ratio tests, because what was highlighted in audit and corporate governance meetings and was confirmed by the external auditors, that this is something that's going to be of significant importance for councils going forward is their liquidity. Um, I'm just wondering as cabinet meets monthly, whether, whether it would be a good idea to have regular reporting on that or indeed in the quarterly performance reports. So I'm just see your views as to whether you think that would be um, an appropriate thing to be keeping an eye on and would you consider including it in your quarterly um, performance indicator reports? Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Councillor Williams, for that suggestion. I'm going to um, defer to uh, Jeff Membry to ask to answer that um, or, you know, indicate you know, how we take that away and give it further consideration. Um, yes, certainly, Leader. I, um, I will talk with Peter Maddock, the Finance uh, Director, to make sure that we can get the information together readily for future performance reports. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Um, is there anything, do you want to add anything to that, Councillor Williams? Um, no, it was just, I, I take it from that that you're, you're looking into it. It's just it was, I think it's definitely something of, of great importance um, is acid ratios in this in this current climate. Thank, thank you very much indeed. Um, Councillor De Lacey. Thank you very much, Leader. Uh, again, I'd like to talk about the contact centre, please. Um, I'm generally very pleased with the results. I think given the pressures to be only amber when we had so much red in previous quarters is, is good. Um, and I also want to thank uh, Mr. Membry for sending me, not for this quarter, unfortunately, but for the last quarter, uh, detailed figures which enabled me to see that whereas averages give you very little idea of the spread, there were only, I think, three callers who hung on for 20 minutes before abandoning their calls. But that does show how important it is, I think, that we have fuller figures. And again, I want to say I'm grateful to Mr. Membry for um, trying to get these figures to us and making sure that in the uh, the updated software, these figures will be immediately available. So uh, thank you very much, and uh, I hope the good work will continue. Thank, thank you very much, Councillor De Lacey. Um, so I mean, three isn't very many, but 20 minutes is a long time. Uh, so uh, uh, Mr. Membry, do you want to just um, talk a little bit about how more, de you know, what the value of more detailed information would be and also how difficult it is to pull that together, if it is difficult? Um, yes, certainly, Leader. At the moment, the the information that we have in our system needs to be um, put together through specific individual reports that have to be written and, and run in order to, to get the information out. Now, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that and, and um, Councillor De Lacey contacted me again and I'm in the process of arranging more up-to-date information for him. But what we are looking to do when we procure our new telephone system is to have live information so that at any one time the, the manager of the service can see how many people are waiting, how long they're waiting for and can redirect resources to tackle those, those people that have been waiting the longest. I think that's the, the way most modern um, tele telephony systems work and it's certainly what we expect for our, our, our customers in South Cam. So that will be part of our new telephony service when it's introduced next year. Oh, thank you. So is that going to be early next year? 
and probably middle uh, of next year leader. It's, it's always difficult at the moment to look at IT implementations in a, in a time of COVID, but um, we're, we're working mm. very hard to get that in as quickly as we can. OK, that's that's super lovely. Uh, thank you. Uh, that's Councillor DeLay, so is there anything else you want to add? No, just thank you very much for that report, uh, Mr Membry. Thank you, leader. That's lovely. Thank you very much indeed. So I haven't got anybody else wanting to speak on this. Um, so the recommendation is set out in paragraph four of the report, uh, which is to note the KPI results and comments at Appendix A and progress against the business plan actions at Appendix B, which is another good piece of work. Thank you very much. Uh, so do members agree with the proposal? Agree. 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 Does anyone wish to vote against? And does anyone wish to abstain? Thank you. So Cabinet therefore agrees to the proposal by affirmation. And uh, we now move on to uh, the equality scheme, which again would have been down to um, Councillor Neil Goff, but he's away, so I shall do this. Um, so again, another another really good piece of work, and my thanks go to Susan Gardner Craig uh, for the efforts that she and her team have put into this. So um, th we have um, a legal a, a legal duty and a moral obligation, I would I would argue, to um, to do this work, but also to produce a an action plan uh, which really you know addresses. Um, our priorities as the leadership of this council, but also ensures that South Cambridgeshire is a really, really good and welcoming place for everybody, everybody to work. Um, so we have, I think it says under the public sector equality duty that came into force in April 2011, local authorities require to prepare and publish one or more objectives to meet any of the aims of the duty every four years. Um, and uh, we, are, we publish our equality objective was objective within the equality scheme, and that's now due for renewal. So we've built a detailed action plan and a very easy to read scheme, which I'm, I'm pleased about because um, I do hate plowing my way through council speak when you know this is an important document for people outside of the council to uh, be able to uh, appreciate as well. Uh, so I think um, Councillor Hawkins, you're going to second this, are you? Uh, yes, um, uh, Leader, I'm seconding this. Okay. And would just like, say like, thank yeah. you to officers as well for the work that's been done and is being scheduled to be done. And as one of those in the minority groups identified, um, I'm pleased to see that we've we've come a long way. Uh, and that um, you know the plan that's been put forward is um, is a really good one, which I'm fully behind. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Councillor Hawkins. And I'm pleased to hear you say we've come a long way. I don't think we should ever rest on our laurels, though. There's always there's always further we can we can go. Uh, so, are there any questions on this from members of cabinet? No. And. Um, Anybody else? I'm, the reason I'm not referring to scrutiny is we haven't had a scrutiny report for this cabinet meeting, but obviously uh, the vice chair cabinet is, is very welcome to uh, to chip in on anything. Um, so I've got Councillor Heather Williams wanting to speak first of all. Um, just really to endorse the comments, I think it's important that this constantly stays under review and we always look for opportunities to improve. Um, and to, to note the work, the task and finish groups um, of all of all members of all parties that have contributed as well. Um, I think it's important that that those are cross party and that we do everything we can to improve what's already, you know, looking to be a very good document, but always room for improvement. Thank, thank you, Councillor Williams, and thank you for uh, reminding me of the uh, the influence of the task and finish group. Uh, which, as you say, is cross party, and this is something that's important to all of us. Um, uh, Councillor Claire Daunton. Um, thank you, Leader. Um, I'm pleased to see that the work of the Task and Finish Group on race has, has um, been noted. Um, we've had three meetings and we are progressing all the issues that um, we set ourselves um, to do. I, I believe that Councillor Richard Williams is also attending this morning. 
Excellent. So thank, thank you very much indeed. And um, you know, my, my thanks to that, that group for the work that they're continuing to do. So um, okie doke. Uh, I haven't got any more to speak. We'll move to the recommendation. The Cabinet's recommended to A, approve the equality scheme at Appendix A, including equality objectives and actions, and B, note the 2019 to 20 equality, diversity and inclusion actions report contained at Appendix B. So do members agree with the proposal? Agree. Agreed. Does anyone Agreed. wish to vote against? And does anyone wish to abstain? Thank you. So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. And moving on now to item nine, which is refugee support. And Councillor Hazel Smith, would you please introduce this report? Thank you, Leader. Um, you, you'll recall that um, about two years ago, we decided that um, we, we would put together a scheme and um, investigate supporting Syrian refugees. Um, and we, throughout the year uh, 2019 to 20, um, we managed to bring over and uh, support uh, four families to settle in the district. We had hoped to do a fifth one, um, but for personal reasons that didn't happen. Um, so it is really a continuation of what we've been doing already that we would like to do. Um, the government suspended the scheme when coronavirus came along and they have now announced um, that, in fact, it was it was only a week or so ago, they announced that they're going to continue for a year the scheme that was previously in operation. So this is very timely. Um, we would like to um, continue with the same sort of level for four families per year and we'd like to make the commitment to do that for three years. Um, so this is really continuation of current policy and it's it's a measured response um, to um, offer support to these families who are in dreadful situations in Syria. Um, so I would commend this to you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Smith. Um, and I'm very pleased this work's continuing. Um, I believe Councillor Aidan van der Weyer is going to second this. Would you like to speak? Yes, that's right. I'll, I'll say a word or two now. Um, if that's okay. yes, thank you. Um, so it, it, we don't live in a bubble in South Cambridgeshire. What happens beyond our borders elsewhere affects us, however, indirectly. Um, if the world outside South Cambridgeshire gets better, we benefit. And if the world outside South Cambridgeshire gets worse, we lose out too. To put it another way, the suffering of others does not make us better off, it diminishes us. This is true whether the suffering occurs just over the border in, say, Suffolk, or 2,000 miles away in a Syrian refugee camp in, in Lebanon. We have the chance today to make a, some tiny contribution to reducing that suffering. Um, the circumstances of these refugees is just unimaginable to us. We just don't have the, the mental tools to comprehend uh, what they've been through. Uh, in addition to being refugees, the people that this programme accepts are among the most, most vulnerable. Um, uh, so their suffering is therefore compounded. Uh, this makes our decision today all the more important. So I, um, I'm very proud to be able to participate in making this decision today to continue to show our solidarity with the people of Syria and to help alleviate uh, some of the misery that Assad and the Syrian regime has inflicted. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Councillor Randwire, and I share your share your feelings exactly. Are there any other cabinet members wish to speak on this item? No, so I will come to other members. Um, I've got Councillor De Lacey. Thank you very much, Leader. Um, I'm aware of one of the four families uh, who have been settled over the last couple of years. Uh, and when we say families, this is not a whole family because, of course, the father is not with them. It's a mother and several children. Uh, as Councillor Van der Weyer said, these are very needy people. And not surprisingly, there have been problems with this family. And I want to pay tribute both to our officers and to city officers who have been enormously supportive of these families. Uh, and it seems to me that is a tremendously important part of this programme. We can't just dump people in a house and assume that that's going to solve their problems. But also I want to play, pay tribute to people who befriended these families. And um, 
there is a limit to what our officers can do. And I hope that when we do resettle families, we try very hard to make sure that neighbours understand what is happening and uh, are able to befriend them, perhaps are given support to befriend them. Uh, and that those who do befriend them are, are helped in whatever ways we can. It's a wonderful scheme. And in our case, in the case that I'm aware of, it is actually working extremely well. So I'm delighted to support this, this project. Thank you, thank you, Councillor De Lacey. So, uh, so I'm not surprised that our officers are all going the extra mile, but it's lovely to hear. And again, I'm not surprised that residents have set, stepped up to, uh, to, to help people who've been through such awful, awful experiences. Um, but you're quite right, it's not, it's not enough just to give a roof over people's heads particularly when they've come through terrible trauma. Uh, so Councillor Sue Ellington. Thank you, Leader. I too would like to uh, say how gratifying it is that we are helping those very vulnerable people. But I would also like to remind members that there are very vulnerable people in our own society and I currently am very aware of a gentleman who spends almost his entire life living in a garage because he's a single man and therefore is very low on the housing list. He has poor health and he has fallen out with his girlfriend who owns the house or who rents the house, is the prime renter for a house. And therefore, whenever she's at home, he spends his life in the garage and we seem unable to help him um, with housing issues. And I know there are other single men who are really struggling in our society. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you uh, very much, Councillor Ellington. I, um, I mean, I will assume, of course, that officers are um, are aware of this this case. I'm sure I'm sure you've brought it to their attention. Um, and you're quite right. Single single homeless men are not are not easy for us to accommodate. Um, I just wondered whether Councillor Hazel Smith wants to respond specifically to the points that you've made before I bring in Councillor De Lacey, who'd like to speak again. Um, I don't know the details of this case, but I know that if he presents as homeless, then our officers will do the best they can for him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Councillor De Lacey. Thank you again, uh, Chairman, uh, uh, Leader Rather. W w one problem, of course, that um, the Syrian refugees have is a language problem. And one great help has been uh, a professional English as a foreign language teacher uh, who has spent a great deal of time with the family of which I'm aware. And uh, this, I suspect, is something our officers uh, are neither uh, trained nor capable of uh, carrying out. So again, I think it would be great if we can find such people, uh, people trained in teaching English as a foreign language, uh, and try and encourage them to meet up with uh, the new refugees who come in to help them cope with the, the, the language issues. Thank, thank you for that. And actually, as you were speaking, um, a name has popped into my head of somebody I know who I think would probably really be, be very pleased. So uh, so thank thank you for that. And we'll take that away and see if we can do something uh, through our communications channels to see if we can um, get any get any volunteers. Thank you very much indeed. Um, right. Any anyone else? No. OK, so moving on. Um, Right, so it is recommended that Cabinet agree to accept up to four refugee families per year within the district as part of the national commitment for the next three years, subject to government providing ongoing funding and developing future schemes and having access to support services that are currently offered by Cambridge City Council or equivalent. And we delegate to the lead cabinet member for housing um, who's able to change this time scale if this brings the time scale into line with the announcement of a future government scheme. So do members agree with proposal? Agree. Thank you. Does anyone wish to vote against? And does anyone wish to abstain? Thank you. So cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. So we're coming on to the uh, sort of finance part of the meeting. Um, so item 10 at page 67, 
uh, is the medium term financial strategy. And I'm going to ask Councillor John Williams if he will present this. Thank you, Leader. Um, firstly, I should like to thank the head of finance and his team uh, for reviewing the medium term financial strategy in difficult circumstances and without full knowledge of the implications of the Chancellor's spending review and the local government financial settlement, uh, which we understand is due on the 23rd of December. Uh, for the purposes of this review, therefore, a worst case scenario approach has been used with no provision for the government providing support for the loss of business rate income arising from COVID-19 and an expectation that the fair funding review will now happen for the financial year 2022-23 and it will result in this council losing a substantial amount in business rate income as a result of the redistribution of that income to councils with adult social care responsibilities. Nevertheless, uh, this, despite this, the council is in a good financial position going forward to 2023 and we will be working on plans to meet the need to find some 5 million in savings over the course of the coming five years through efficiencies and new income streams, which we have every confidence in achieving. The MTFS assumes that we will continue to increase council tax um, to um, the um, five pound, um, sorry, to the five pound a year or 10p per week uh, for band D property. Um, no further growth has been assumed and for the capital programme, we have modelled the 1% increase in the public works loan board rate, although, as we know, this has now since been reversed by the spending review. Uh, and on that, we are currently assessing the implications of the changes to the PWLB rules introduced by the spending review, which will be the subject of a report very soon. The MTFS review also assumed a pay award the time of which has now also been affected by the spending reviews freeze on local government pay for three years. For the purpose of this MTFS review, therefore, which took place before the spending review, we had to make many assumptions, some of which, as you see, have already been overtaken by events. It is clear, therefore, that the MTFS that will be used for determining the council tax in February which will take into account the spending review and the subsequent local government finance settlement will differ from this review, but the long term projections we expect will remain broadly as they are given here. I think it's worth reminding ourselves that when the Liberal Democrats co took control of this council, it was predicted by the previous administration that in normal circumstances at the end of this financial year, we would be taking over 2.7 million from our reserves to balance the budget and that the following year nearly 2.3 million would be needed from reserves. As you can see, even with COVID-19, this year and next, we will in all probability be putting money into our reserves as we did last year. Whilst doing this, we have transformed the management of this council. I don't think we could have set up the coordinated community response to COVID-19 in all our villages in the former council. We're delivering improved services such as mobile wardens, street cleansing and dealing quickly with fly tipping. We organised the planning service to be more responsive to our communities and heighten the importance of tackling climate change with the Zero Carbon Communities Fund, the introduction of electric refuge vehicles and a generation of electricity from our buildings. And we now have an investment strategy that's more diverse and is bringing more income to deliver frontline services. This is the sign of a well-managed council and I thank our senior management team for the efforts they have made and will continue to make to transform this council to be a beacon for others to follow. So I would ask Cabinet to recommend this refreshed MTFS to full council. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Williams, and I echo your thanks and praise of the senior management team and particular of uh, the finance team, which um, which you are you are responsible for, for for holding it all together with the while dealing with the enormous burdens that COVID have put put on them. So 
Many thanks to all of them. Uh, so I believe Councillor Peter MacDonald is going to second this. Do you want to speak on this at this stage? Just just very briefly, Leader, is, which is to um, uh, a second the medium term financial strategy and also to uh, thank the new business support team in, in this context. Whilst we are um, under pressure to deliver during COVID, that, that team and the revenues team have been absolutely fantastic on uh, issuing uh, much needed grants to business. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, so do, do any other members of cabinet wish to speak? No. OK, so I've got Councillor Heather Williams who would like to. Thank you, Leader. And can I can I start by echoing um, the the actual the performance, sorry, of with the business grants for the finance team on this latest round? They have acted very swiftly. Um, and I know the hours that um, Peter and, and others in the finance department are committing to get accounts audited and budget at the same time, which is very difficult. I, I can really empathise with that. Um, and I just wanted to ask a couple of questions in clarification, if I may, Leader. Um, so the lead member for finance has said that, that this is the worst case scenario that's been used. However, we are still with some of the assumptions on PWLB, um, but we don't know if we're actually going to be able to borrow for the investments through the PWLB. So just wondering what the comparison is to the commercial rates that we would anticipate and as its worst case scenario have been factored in. And also my understanding is that we're, we're actually including to this a partial rates reset where previously we thought it was a full reset. Now my, my interpretation would be the worst case scenario would be a full reset. And, and that's not an assumption I understand that's in here. I, I may be wrong. So I'm just wondering how we can justify the worst case scenario reference. Um, and finally, I just wanted to find out because I recall the last we heard of Castle Rig and the reports. I remember it was a cabinet meeting that uh, Councillor Aidan Vanderweer, it was a mammoth meeting. It, it went on forever that he, he chaired. Um, and I remember raising then concern about we were entering another phase of reports and how many other phases there would be. Um, but we don't seem to have heard anything in the public domain as to that money that was spent. And budget after budget for when I've been here have we always said that further savings would be incredibly difficult to find in efficiencies. I know the Castle Rig was paid for to, to find those savings and options put forward. So I'm just wondering where that report is. Are we still paying Castle Rig for any more reports or are we taking any of that forward? What sort of happened with that money that was spent on those reports? Thank you, Leader. Uh, thank, thank you very much. So I've got I've got three questions here. Um, one is about the assumptions on PWLB, which I'll ask um, Councillor uh, John Williams to answer, and on assumptions around the whether the assumptions on a partial rates reset justifies the worst case scenario. On the transformation work, I'm going to ask uh, Jeff Membry to respond, respond to that. So if we start off with Councillor John Williams on the first two points, please. Yeah, th thank, thank you, Leader. Um, as I said, there will be a report coming uh, to Cabinet uh, very soon on the implications of the change to the rules for the Public Works Loan Board. But I would say that the um, Midterm financial strategy doesn't assume um, the purchase of uh, more properties. Um, the worst case scenario in in the uh, uh, in the um, um, MTFS is is as it is at the moment. So we're not we're not making any predictions in it. And of course, the changes to the PWLB refer to future purchases, not not what we have already purchased. Um, it's quite clear from the um, from the government's report on the consultation um, that they undertook into this that it's not retrospective. So um, the MTFS takes account of what we already have, but doesn't take account of what we intend to do in future. And obviously what we will do in future will be subject to the new rules of the uh, Public Works Loan Board. And as I say, we will be receiving a report on that in due course. Um, so in that way, actually, um, it is a worst case scenario because we're, we're not predicting any further uh, purchases of, of commercial property and therefore income within the MTFS. 
which is why you see that when it comes to commercial income, it 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 gradually um, drops off over the over the five year period uh, new income. Um, the other bit about um, um, the resetting of the business rate, uh, we have very firm. Um, we 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 have had very firm um, intelligence now that that there will not be a full uh, rate uh, re in review and and a reset. That it will be a partial reset. So that's why that's been written into. Um, if we didn't have that assurance, yes, yes, absolutely right. We would have uh, factored in a a possibility of a of a complete uh, with uh, baseline change in business rates, but that is not what we're being told by our experts will happen. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, Councillor Williams. As I say, it's uh, it's a moving feast, isn't it? I'm, I'm going to bring in our chief executive, Liz Watts, um, first of all, to talk about the um, about some of these questions. I suspect on the transformation work. So, hello, Liz. Thanks and good morning, members. I, I just wanted to cover off the question about Castle Rig initially because Jeff wasn't here um, uh, when that work took place, uh, and nor was I actually, but I inherited the report. It was a useful report, um, and what it made me realise quite quickly was in the leadership team structure, we needed to uh, create the post of head of transformation in order to take our transformation work forward. So, so that just really puts the context uh, in terms of how we sort of closed off the castle rig work. And if I could hand over now, um, Councillor Smith to Jeff, he can talk a little bit about the transformation work. Thank, thank you very much. It was it was always the you know the initial work to identify uh, identify opportunities. So, uh, so uh, Jeff Membry, if you'd kindly step in. Yes, certainly, Leader. Um, we've already started work on what's going to effectively be a two year programme of service reviews across all of the services of the council. And what we're looking to do is to make the best use of modern technology so that we can provide the sort of service that our residents expect in the same way that they live the rest of their lives. Uh, but do it in such a way that we combine it with well trained, empowered staff who are able to give up more holistic uh, response to customers when they contact us. So the aspiration is to allow cu uh, customers to contact us more regularly by using smartphones or, or on online devices so that things are available 24 seven and eventually close to 365 days a year. And then when they do need to speak to a person to make sure that the people that they speak to are well informed and can deal with their full range of inquiries. The intention is to get to a situation where only something like 10% of inquiries need to go through to a specialist officer in the back office to deal with very, very specific technical points. The, the advantage of using a combination of well-trained staff and the, the most modern technology is that you can also do that more effectively and efficiently. So we're in a, a position where we're looking over the next sort of two years to roll out the changes across all of the services of the council and try to square that circle of providing better customer satisfaction at a more cost effective uh, rate for the council taxpayers. Um, I'm more than happy to, to meet with Councillor Williams to discuss it in more detail if she'd find that helpful. Uh, thank, thank you. Um, I'm sure Councillor Williams will take take up that offer if she likes. So I should just say that both um, Liz Watts and Jeff Membry have uh, considerable experience and uh, reputation for leading innovative transformation pro projects that uh, you know will result in much improved customer experience and a much uh, you know much more efficient efficient council. So uh, you know we now have the people in place. Uh, to to do to do this work in in house, which was always our our aim, really. Um, so, any more questions on the MTFS? No. Okay. Lee, so, uh, I, yes, we can come back. back on, yeah, please do. Thank you. Um, the the second phase then report as as members of the council, we got to see the first phase. Would the leader be willing to share the second report that was? <laughs> um, with all members of the council. <laughs> Uh, so I'm going. I'll have to review that. I'll come, can I come back to you on that? Sorry, the postman just came bar, past, so the the dog is now going uh, going nuts. <laughs> um, I'll come back. I'll come back to you on that, Councillor Williams. 
All right, so moving on. Uh, so the recommendation is that Cabinet acknowledges the projected changes in service spending and the overall resources available to the Council over the medium term. B, recommend to full Council the refreshed MTFS at Appendix A and updated financial forecast at Appendix B. C, note the growth bids detailed at Appendix C for inclusion in the budget setting report in February 2021. And D, note the proposed uh, range of service efficiencies, savings, stroke policy options detailed in Appendix D of the report, and that these will undergo further refinement and consultation with employees and other stakeholders prior to forming part of the budget setting report in February 2021. Uh, do members agree with the proposal? I agree. Okay. Thank you. Anybody wish to vote against it? And anyone wish to abstain? So Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. And item 11 is the capital programme update and new bids, uh, which is going to be presented by Councillor John Williams again. Um, th thank you, Leader. Um, as, as mentioned in the previous report on the MTFS uh, review, the capital programme has been affected by COVID-19 and as a result we have had to rephase and reprofile a number of projects. Um, details of this and new bids can be found in the appendices. Therefore I ask Cabinet to recommend to full council the revised capital programme for the period 2020-21 to 2025-26. Of course the spending review also introduced changes to the rules for loans from the Public Works Loan Board which we've already touched on. And as I have said in my previous report, the impact of this on the capital programme and future commercial investment is being considered and a report will come to Cabinet as soon as possible. Um, we understand, as I said, I mentioned in my response to Councillor Heather Williams, uh, we do not believe these changes are retrospective um, and there are currently no new commercial investments pending approval. Uh, thank you, Lee. Thank you very much. And I believe that Councillor Brian Milnes is going to second this. Uh, Councillor Milnes, do you want, wish to speak? No, but I'm happy to second it. Thank you, Leader. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, would anybody uh, from Cabinet like to comment? No. And would anybody else like to ask any questions on item 11? No, I can't see anyone. OK. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to, there's quite a lot of recommendations. I'm not going to read them all out. They're on page 99, but essentially referring to the four appendices uh, and they are there for anybody to read. Uh, so do members agree with the proposal? Agreed. 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 Anyone wish, everyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? So the cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. And moving on to um, item 12, which is fees and charges. And again, Councillor Williams. Uh, thank, th thank you, Leader. Um, this particular item, um, what many of the charges and fees that um, are, are set for us um, by government, but we do have a discretion in a number of areas. Um, where possible, we have basically kept um, the fees where we have discretion on um, the same as, um, as as this year going forward. But there are a couple of areas where we have felt it in important to um, to increase uh, fees um, because of um, um, because of our green agenda, basically. Um, one area is litter and dog mess, where although we um, can't set the the, um, the, the the fine itself, we have a discretion over how much discount we can give uh, for people who pay that fine early, and we have reduced the discount for both litter dropping and, and dog uh, fouling. Um, and then on the other item is regarding green bins, and that's where we have increased the charge for a second green bin, um, not only reflecting the cost of of the extra um, time it takes to uh, empty a, 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 another bin, but also the fact that we want to encourage people to compost. And those who can, um, who need two green bins, um, I think one accepts have a larger than normal garden. And we believe we should be encouraging those people 
to compost their green waste uh, rather than send it to um, uh, all well and good. Of course, it gets turned into compost eventually at Water Beach, but we would rather they did their own composting at home. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, Councillor Mills, are you seconding this? I am, and uh, I'd like to endorse um, uh, Councillor Williams' comments, uh, particularly about the uh, uh, additional composting um, uh, capacity for people. If they can do that, that will help us all out uh, significantly. Um, and you, you know that we're experimenting at the moment with a separated um, household waste, food waste program. Uh, uh, which is uh, uh, also a good move in the right direction. So I'm happy to second this uh, motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I know we've been uh, doing a lot to try and uh, minimise minimise food waste, um, which I think is a sort of national campaign as well. Um, OK, any questions from Cabinet, please? No? Uh, so I've got Councillor Heather Williams who'd like to ask a question. <laughs> Either. I do believe Councillor Delacy was ahead of me, and I oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Delacy, of course. Thank, thank you, you, and thank you also to Councillor Heather Williams. Um, when we last announced a um, a fee for a second green bin, I mentioned that in my weekly report, uh, my monthly report rather, to my local parishes. Um, I received, I think, three letters saying that this was an absolute disgrace. And a much, much larger number of people who, who said, oh, I didn't realise I could have a second bin. Please, may I have one straight away? So um, a fee on the second bin, although it may be unpopular for some people, uh, is certainly others uh, something that others would find attractive. Though I do hope that we can, as has been suggested, work on people with larger gardens to suggest that uh, there is room for a compost bin. They can do it themselves. Uh, I do what I can in my villages and I hope the council as a whole uh, will continue to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Mills, do you want to respond to that? Well, no, I would think I think uh, Councillor uh, uh, De Lacey's uh, representation is, is quite accurate. It reflects um, what we've heard elsewhere. Um, so thank you. Thanks very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Councillor De Lacey. Uh, Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you. Same topic, but my, my ward must be out of kilter, I'm afraid, because I've not had one person supportive of it, um, of the introduction of the green bins. They, they felt that it didn't actually meet with the green green agenda, that they were being penalised for recycling. Um, I appreciate what you say about the home composting, but it's just not possible for, for many people for various reasons, quite often through, through age and the ability to, to upkeep and everything else. Um, and we are seeing a significant increase at, at present in fly tipping um, and I just want to know what the cabinet intends to do if we're potentially going to be deterring people from from recycling through the, through the green bin uh, situation how are we going to make sure that that's not countered by um, an increase in fly tipping as we've seen previously Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Williams. Um, well, I'm going to go back to Councillor Mills, but I think, you know, um, it's a pretty tenuous connection between a green bin charge and increases in fly tipping, because I don't, I think generally fly tipping is not stuff that would go into, uh, into green, green bins. But uh, Councillor Brown Mills, if you'd like to come back in. Well, of course, you, you've made exactly the uh, point that I was going to make, uh, Leader. So, um, no, the, I, I don't know that the, um, there's an, any evidence at all that uh, could link uh, those two. Um, we have to bear in mind that we've got no uh, particular obligation uh, legally to do green um, bin collections at all. So the first bin is um, uh, basically a service that we're happy to, uh, to offer. Uh, the second bin obviously represents um, typically a, a larger garden that is producing more um, um, bins. So it's it's effectively a progressive uh, tax, if uh, for want of better reason, uh, better explanation. And I, I don't think we're going to have a huge amount of, of problems with uh, uh, increasing that uh, that charge. Um, uh, and the flight tipping is a, 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 a separate issue. 
um, that we're trying to tackle uh, by you know, communications uh, that we're, we're doing. So we've done radio interviews recently and particularly to encourage um, uh, residents to use um, uh, certified uh, waste collectors and, and metal collectors, which they can do by checking certification with the Environment Agency, uh, which avoids um, those uh, uh, flight, uh, flight tips by people uh, man in a van, let's uh, call it. So we are, thank, we are working thank. on all of those issues. Thank you. So, uh, so fly, fly tipping is extremely irritating for us and costly and unpleasant for our residents. Um, so when I met with one of our two MPs, uh, Lucy Fraser, last week, I did uh, talk about this with her and I did say that that it's very difficult for us in local government to deter people when we are very limited in the fines that we can levy on people who fly tip. I think it's I think it's four hundred pounds maximum at the moment. That's, um, that's and, and it can be discounted as well uh, if they pay early. So two hundred and forty pounds for some some operators um, who will take a chance um, and not uh, certify themselves uh, ahead of time. Is certainly significant with that. Absolutely, absolutely, and um, you know, and also I believe that we we aren't able to uh, recoup our costs either. So you know, there is a there's a cost to the public per purse here, uh, and so I have asked her to talk to ministers about. Uh, you know what can be done about that so at least we can recoup all our costs and that the fines that we levy can actually be a proper deterrent to people because as things stand at the moment uh, you know rather than paying for proper disposal people can be rather quids in by just having to accept a fine fine from us so it's an unacceptable situation but it's a, a national problem that it, that's not you know not just faced by us so I hope that um, our MPs are able to do something I will be talking to our other MP about it when next Next time, meet with him uh, to see whether we can uh, get a bit more impetus on this one. Um, so, coming back to oh, so I think I've got uh, Councillor Judith Rippeth now. I just want to add one other thing to the green bin um, conversation. Um, I think it's right to charge for the second green bin. One of the main reasons being it's far greener to compost in your own garden than to be sending all of that material in a diesel lorry, bar one lorry that's electric, back up to the depot. So if you're trying to do something green, I try to do it at home. Thank you, that's that's very helpful indeed. Um, Councillor Williams, is there, do you want to uh, add anything to uh, the conversation we've been having about this? Assuming you mean myself, leader. Councillor, um, sorry, Councillor. Well, I was. I meant <laughs> Councillor John Williams, but it, uh, Councillor Heather. I, I wasn't you. sure because it was my <laughs> friend. Too many of you. Uh, if there is anything else, Councillor Heather Williams, you'd like to add, you're very welcome to. No, I'll, I'll let Councillor John Williams go if that's what he wants. Thank you. No, I don't have any. Uh, thank you, leader. But I don't have any more comments. I think uh, Councillor Milnes um, yeah, has adequately uh, um, responded to the questions. Okay, thank you very much indeed. So the rec recommendations are that cabinets requested to consider the report and if satisfied to A, approve the fees and charges as detailed in Appendix A of the report to take effect from the 1st of April 2021, unless otherwise stated, or the earliest feasible date thereafter, and B, note the proposed variations to fees and charges in comparison to the prevailing inflation rate detailed in the report. Uh, so um, our members... Uh, in agreement with the proposal? Agree. Agree. Anyone wish to vote against? Agreed. And anyone wish to abstain? Okay, so the Cabinet therefore agrees the proposal by affirmation. So moving on to the quarter two, uh, quarter two monitoring report. And uh, Councillor Williams again. Thank, thank you, Leader. Um, when I presented the quarter one results, um, I said that it was difficult at that time to give a full assessment of the impact of COVID-19 on the council's finances. Unfortunately, quarter two is just as difficult because government support for the loss of income for the first four months of this financial year has only just been received and we have only just been asked to submit our bid for the next four months. 
Moreover, we still await the government's decision on whether or not it will reimburse us for the loss of council tax and business rates due to COVID-19. So the table in paragraph 18 has to be treated with caution as the true picture will not be as bad as it looks. But to what extent, we just don't know currently. The detailed summary of the variances can be found in Appendix C. You will see that the loss of income that has severely impacted on commercial waste and planning. With regard to the former, you will see from paragraph 15 of the report that some of this has been offset by lower staff costs in waste as staff were redeployed from commercial waste to domestic curbside collection rounds with a saving on agency staff. However, as to the planning service, COVID-19 has had a severe impact on earnings, both from development management and large land charges, as you can see from the appendix. We also had less income from licensing and other fees. As I've said, the government has promised to make good for most of these losses, but the money is slow in coming through and we hadn't received it by quarter two. As to additional costs arising from COVID-19, the government has promised 1.9 million to support us and so far 1.8 million has been received. Paragraph 11 draws attention to the 1.7 million worth of efficiency proposals contained in this year's budget, which are summarised in Appendix A, most of which we expect to achieve. I have to say without these efficiencies, we would be in a worse situation. Uh, thank you, um, Leader. Thank you very much. And uh, Councillor Hazel Smith, are you are you seconding this item? Yes, I'd like to second this item. Um, I'd like to thank the officers for the work on this. It's it's obviously been quite quite difficult to draw the line and and actually summarise what's going on because it's a moving picture, um, and it it is. I find I find it very interesting reading all the detail of this um, in in the um, in the alternative ways of working. We've got their um, item six. Sorry, which page in Appendix A um, talks about um, unnecessary travel to meetings. And I, I suspect that some of these things will become permanent and we will make savings going forward um, on on using using the technology as we are at the moment so yes it, it's it's very interesting i i think i think al although it's it is a worrying picture i think we're doing very well actually and um yeah i'd just like to commend the officers for their work and second this thank you thank you very much indeed uh yes i i Similarly, I'm very, very grateful to uh, the, the leadership and the expertise that we have within the council um, from officers and, and members as well. Uh, so any anyone from cabinet want to comment on this? No? OK, so I'm going to bring in Councillor Anna Bradnam to start with. Sorry, leader, I, I withdrew my request to speak. Oh. Oh, you were okay. That's fine. Sorry, sorry about that. Did I did I miss you from the last one? I am sorry if I, I, I did. I was just I was just a bit late. I wanted to make a comment about bins, but th don't worry, it can pass. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Sorry about that. Uh, Councillor Heather Williams. Thank you. Um, it was just a couple of things, and I appreciate that the you know this year has not been the most most um, straightforward of years to, to work in. So um, I think the officers have, have done very well to compile the reports and, and keep things going as they have. Um, and I make that clear before my comment. Um, I just wanted to ask a, a few issues and raise something that I have raised previously in relation to the RAG rating and the way, way things are, and underspends are naturally go, are put into to green um, and within a certain percentage I, I can appreciate that but I think actually there is just as much danger in an underspend as there is an overspend um, and I know previously Councillor Goff agreed to look at the, the rag rating system to see 
whether you know if things are underspent by 90 or 80 percent obviously that's that's not great um and there are risks attached to that so i'm just wondering if that if that um work has progressed on, on my request last time because i think especially in today's climate that needs highlighting for things such as the telephones the installation of a new telephone system i remember that being the budget the, the, well the budget that was adopted before i was even a councillor um and that's that's still on there as a to-do so it'd be good to get some distinction between sort of historic rolling forwards and and what have you and um, i also just wanted to make sure where our position is on right to buy receipts um because then there may have been some discretion given on that but as you as we can see from the figures that in the current time it's been harder to spend those um, and then on planning, I'd just like to seek some reassurance from Cabinet that when they go forward to their budget, obviously we saw a significant cut, 17.5% roughly, in the planning budget between um, between years but to the one that we're currently in. And given the figures here and, and the uncertainty, some reassurance that Cabinet won't be looking to cut um, the amount of money going forward. Thank you, Leader. Uh, thank you. So I'll, I'll just I'll make um, comment on the first two, uh, but then I'm sure uh, Councillor Williams would like to, uh, to say something else. Um, so on the uh, we we did debate, we did look in detail about uh, rag ratings in relation to uh, underspends as well as overspends. Uh, but our judgment was at the end of the day that this wasn't going to be helpful. It was actually going to be confusing. One of the issues was that if you've got a pretty small budget for something, let's say a budget's only £10,000 and something's happened that hasn't allowed you to uh, to deliver on it, you could end up with a you know 100% underspend, which actually was a very was a very small amount small amount of money so you know we did we did debate this and decided that um it wouldn't it wouldn't be helpful um on the right to buy receipts uh, i'm sure councillor williams can add something to that and councillor hazel smith might as well but there's been some serious lobbying at the local government association be, um be, to uh, get government to agree for an extension for the time period for right to buy receipts in light of COVID, because as you said, as you rightly pointed out, uh, you know the building industry uh, has well halted for quite some time and is definitely slowed, and therefore spending some of these receipts is is at risk now. But there is cross party lobbying going on on that, to the best of my knowledge. Uh, so if I could just bring in Councillor John Williams and then any other cabinet member who would like to. Uh, respond to any of those points. Uh, thank, thank you, Leader. I, actually, I was going to suggest that um, um, Councillor Smith, Hazel Smith, and um, and Councillor uh, Toomey Hawkins uh, respond on those two particular points, as they're much closer to to what's going on than I am. Okay, thank you. If I can bring in Hazel Smith first of all, and then Councillor Hawkins afterwards. Yes, on the question of right to buy receipts, um, with our council house building program, which um, Obviously, we're increasing the numbers of council houses that we're building. And um, although there was uh, some time when they were not on site, they have picked up very well and we're going forward and we're, we're likely to meet um, all the targets um, with, with very little slippage, actually. Um, we've, um, we've delivered quite a few council houses um, over to new residents over the summer. And I, I don't see there being a problem with right to buy receipts because we're doing plenty of building. Well, well done to the team for keeping that going. Uh, Councillor Hawkins. Uh, thank you, Leader. I mean, definitely, if it were only down to me, we would not be taking anything out of planning. We are actually looking at um, more resources. Uh, because we still have vacancies to fill and we have a lot of work to do. So, you know, we will do what is best for the planning system is what I can say to Councillor Williams. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, does Peter Maddox want to add any, anything in here? Yeah, Andrew, um, we obviously keep a very close uh, eye on our right to buy receipts and when we're going to spend them. So we actually monitor them on a, on a monthly basis. So as Hazel said earlier, things are looking okay at the moment. Um, 
but we seem to have we seem to be in a good position to spend our one-to-one -one receipts in the time frame required. So um, so far so good, but it's something we do need to keep an eye on. Thank you, thank you very much indeed, Mr. Mr. Maddox. Much appreciated. Okay, um, have I got any other questioners? No, I don't think so. So we'll move to the recommendation, uh, which is that Cabinet A acknowledge the forecast 2020-21 uh, revenue outturn position against the approved revenue budget shown in Appendix B. The projected major variances with reasons for these variances at Appendix C1 and C2 and the action being taken to address the underlying issues. And B, we acknowledge the latest position on the 2020-21 capital programme and variances of any as shown in Appendix D. So do members agree with that proposal? Agree. 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 Thank you. Anyone wish to vote against? And anyone wish to abstain? Good, so Cabinet therefore agrees the proposals by affirmation. OK, so that brings us to the end of the substantive business. In my enthusiasm to get started, I completely missed out the leaders announcements. My apologies for that because uh, I had two um, and they uh, related to changes on committees. So I have an announcement that uh, Philip Allen, who has stood down as a councillor, is to be replaced on the Brexit advisory group by Councillor Ian Solemn and that Claire, uh, Councillor Claire Delderfield is standing down as a sub substitute from the Audit and Corporate Governance Committee, and she will be replaced by Councillor Steve Hunt. Thank you. Uh, is that okay? Dem services have captured that, have they? Uh, so the date, date of the next meeting um, is scheduled to take place on Monday, the 18th of January, 2021 at 10 o'clock. Um, and thank you very much to all the members of the public, to officers and members who participated. And we wish you all a very happy COVID free Christmas and New Year and look forward to seeing you on the 18th of January. Can we stop the live stream now, please?